Is it absolutely inevitable that a Buddha will always be misunderstood? Prem Madhira, yes, it is absolutely inevitable. It can't be otherwise. A Buddha is bound to be misunderstood. If a Buddha is not misunderstood, then he is not a Buddha at all. Why it is so? Because the Buddha lives in a state which is beyond mind. And we live in minds. To translate something from the beyond to the mind is the most impossible thing in the world. It can't be done, although every Buddha has tried to do it. That too is inevitable. No Buddha can avoid it. The Buddha has to say the unsayable. He has to express the inexpressible. He has to define the indefinable. He has to do this absurd act, because the moment he reaches beyond the mind, great compassion arises. He can see people stumbling in the dark. He can see people suffering unnecessarily, creating their own nightmares creating their own hell and drowning in their own created hells. How can he avoid not feeling compassion? And the moment compassion arises, he wants to communicate to them that this is your own doing that you can get out of it, that there is a way out of it, that there is a state beyond it. That life is not what you think it is. Your thinking about life is just like the thinking of a blind man about light. The blind man can go on thinking about light, but he will never be able to come to a true conclusion. His conclusions may be very logical, but still they will miss the experience. Light is an experience. You don't need logic for it. What you need is eyes. Buddha has eyes. And eyes are attained only when you have gone beyond the mind, when you have become a witness of the mind, when you have attained to a higher state than psychology, when you know that you are not your thoughts, not your body. When you know that you are only knowing the energy that reflects, the energy that is capable of seeing, that you are pure seeing, once Buddha was asked, Who are you? He was such 
a beautiful man and the Buddhahood has conferred such grace to him that many times he is asked, who are you? He looked like an emperor or a god who has come from the heaven and he lived like a beggar. Again and again he is asked, who are you? And the man who was asking was a great scholar. He said, are you from the world of gods? Are you a god? Buddha said, no. Then are you a Gandharva? Gandharvas are the musicians of the gods. Buddha had such music around himself, the music of silence, the sound of no sounds, one hand clapping, that it was natural to ask him, are you a Gandharva? A celestial musician? Buddha said, no. And the man goes on asking, there are many categories in Hindu mythology, from gods to men. Then finally he asks, are you a great king, a Chakravartin, one who rules over the world? And Buddha says, no. Annoyed, the scholar asked, are you a man or not even that? Buddha said, don't be annoyed, but what can I do? I have to state the truth as it is. I am not a man either. Now the scholar is too much angry, enraged. He says, then are you a, an animal? Buddha said, no. Not an animal, not a tree, not a rock. Then who are you? The man asked. Buddha said, I am awareness. Just pure awareness, just a mirror reflecting all that is. When this moment arrives, great compassion happens. Buddha has said that those who know are bound to feel compassion for those who don't know. They start trying to help. And the first thing that has to be done is to communicate to people who are blind that eyes are possible, that you are not really blind, but only keeping your eyes closed. You can open your eyes, you are not born blind. You have only been taught to remain blind. Your society teaches you to be blind.